Welcome back all. Today we're going to go ahead and jump into a chapter that will deal with loops in C++. Now in this chapter we will learn four different types of loops. For, while, do while and for reach. So we will also learn another one, the so-called go-to loop. Uh, keep in mind that I've said this, uh, that I take this with a grain of salt, let's put it like that. Not exactly a loop, but not exactly a not loop. <laughs> However you wish to look at it. As I said, we will, we will learn the so-called go-to loop, which can be used for the simulation of loops. Now, loops as a general concept is present in pretty much all programming languages. They all pretty much use loops in order to perform repetitive tasks. Like you have a chunk of code which you would like to be repeated over a set number of iterations and therefore you just go and use a loop in order to make that possible. So as I said, it's just a concept that is uh, used widely across pretty much all programming languages. But here I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can use these various types of loops in C++. Uh, the for reach is also in, is primarily for C++ 11. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project. You might notice that my uh, taskbar is gone down below. Well, I didn't really need it, so I just hit it. Let's uh, hit it down below. It it should pop when I touch the bottom with my mouse, but oh well. Anyway, console application. This was, by the way, completely relevant for the course. Let's go ahead and click on next, C++. Sure, this is going to be chapter four. That's how I'm naming them. You can name them any way you like. Chapter four, loops. Okay, so next, finish. Excellent. Oh, one of these days I'm going to fix this. I don't think it matters that much, really. Uh, come on, zoom it in for me. Thank you very much. So let's let's go ahead and start. Let's begin with uh, one example. We will write a program that prompts the user to input a number n and then asks the user to input n numbers. In the end, it basically just outputs the sum of those numbers. So it might seem a little bit confusing when I put it like this, but you will see it is extremely simple. So just go ahead and include IO stream, so input output stream, the library here, and that's it. Int main and go down below, int 10. So this, oops, int 10. This will be our integer variable that will hold the number that the user enters as input. Okay, so she'll use from the std namespace c out and enter n. Okay, no need for the next line. We want it all to be in the same line. See, we have a semicolon and then a space, and then we'll be able to enter a number. And down below, std colon colon cn and n semicolon hopefully by now you know what these are like yep, the operators anyway uh semicolon here and n here that's gonna we have instructed user hold on we have instructed user here here we've told the user basically hey do that ah enter so we've told the user here to enter a number n or just enter n and down below well enter int n let's put it like this so that the user knows it's an integer that uh, sure he needs to input anyway and down below we have provided a method for the user to actually be able to input to input whatever whatever has been asked of that user to basically input that integer anyway uh, we will go ahead and need to do we will go ahead and need to declare a variable called sum, so zero here, and we need to initialize it to zero. So it must, and I mean it must in this case be initialized to zero as it can cause some serious problems if it is not initialized. It's not, the compiler is not going to report any problems. However, it will be one of those logic errors on the user's end and you might not get what you want to get. I will explain why, in a moment when we actually get to that portion. Well, I typing today is amazing. Anyway, for 
this is going to be an example of a for loop. So int i, we can declare another variable here, and that variable holds and is declared uh, for the scope of the loop. Beyond the loop, it is not uh, known. You can literally declare an i again outside of the loop without any problems. However, once declared outside of the loop, then it's a completely different matter. Okay, so it's lesser than or equal to n, and it's going to be plus plus i. Okay, so our loop, it's going to start from one. I stands for index or iterator or however you want to call it. You don't need to use I, you could have used pretty much any name, any legit variable a name here instead of I, so it's not a big deal. But a general standard practice is to use I, uh, J, K, and uh, those three, but you can use pretty much whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Pseudo, you can tune it to your convenience, let's put it like that. Anyway, our for loop, it starts from number one. So i has been initialized to one. We could have initialized it to whatever we wanted to initialize it, it really doesn't matter. And then it goes to n. Uh, i will continue to increase here until this condition is satisfied. So for as long as i is lesser or equal to n, this here will evaluate the true and therefore whatever is within the, within the body of the loop of the for loop will execute or keep executing over the each iteration. Once this condition here becomes false, then whatever is within the body of the loop will cease and the loop will itself terminate as well. Of course, this is if we input one if we input 10, for example, I is one, so one is lesser or equal to 10. Yes. Uh, okay, iterated by one. And I don't know, do do whatever we what do whatever else we tell you to do basically. But eventually, over the course of iterations, I will become two, and then it will become three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it will become eleven. And eleven will no longer be less or equal to n. So this number n is the basically the amount of repeatances for this loop. Within the loop, we shall declare int number std colon colon c out, and we shall do this uh, enter. Um, let's put a semicolon, why not? I dot number semicolon. Ah, there we go, it's closed. And let's provide a way for the user to actually input something. std colon colon. Previously, I've stated, like, let's provide a method for user to input something. I mean, method, methods are something completely different in C++. We will get to that. It's just a way of my expressions that can be a little bit confusing, but just, just provide a way for user to basically just input something. So get that number. And what will happen here is that the loop will repeat for as many times as we have specified with the n here, what, which the user basically inputted. And down in the loop, on every iteration of the loop, uh, the user will be prompted to enter, oops, sorry, not i, n, ah, ooh, number, my apologies. Uh, on every iteration of the loop, the user will be prompted to actually enter a certain number. And that number, uh, the way for inputting that number has been provided here. So every time this loop repeats, uh, the user will be prompted, okay, please enter a number. And you will see it will be printed out on the screen every time we actually input the number, depending on how many times we have specified that we want the loop to repeat itself. And now we come to the point of sum. And I will show you here and demonstrate why, actually just show you why we needed to initialize sum to zero. It's rather simple. So let's let's uh, not use this format here. Let's just put it like this. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so uh, sum. 
we have declared it here int sum. Now imagine if we didn't now imagine if we didn't actually initialize it to anything. What does that mean? Well, a variable sum would have been created and it would have occupied a certain space in RAM. So whatever was in that space prior to the creation of this variable would therefore would become the content of this variable. And then when we would get to this point here, the content of that variable would actually be to that content uh, this number would have been added. So we would get something completely different other than the sum of numbers that we wanted. So imagine, ima just imagine that you had some like 0x and some random things here. Well, there, there are no u's. <laughs> and just some random, random information here that has been, I don't know, perhaps a variable from the previous program or something like that, etc. Some some random value. That would have been a problem because then we would be calculating the sum of a certain amount of numbers and we would have been adding that uh, that random value to that sum. Therefore, that sum would not be accurate. Therefore, we have ensured that that mistake will not happen by simply initializing the sum to zero, the variable sum to zero, and therefore uh, everything will just be added to zero. There will be no third party values that will be added into, that will factor into our sum. Anyway, there is no need to write it like this. This is the long version. Uh, you can simply do this plus, and there we go. So this is, this is basically the same as what we have just written. So sum equals sum plus number is the same as sum plus equals number. Exactly two same things, uh, just written in a different fashion. I would always advise you to use this format as it is, as it, I mean, it's just shorter to write and it's quite easy to comprehend and understand for anybody who knows what they're looking at. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in std colon colon c out and sum of n, I don't know, n numbers or I, I don't know, we'll just place n. Okay, uh, numbers is, gotta love my notes, sum std colon colon and l and semicolon. Okay, sum of n entered numbers is, and then of course the sum, and there we're gonna go and move on into a new line in order to make this, in order to make this simpler. So let's go ahead and type in return zero. Do I have it? Nope. Return zero, and let's go ahead and see what happens. What's gonna What's gonna transpire here? Uh, there's going to be an error. That's going to be the first thing that happens. I wonder what the problem is here. Uh, okay. There is a semicolon, my good man. Why are you reporting that there is a expected semicolon before string constant? Uh, let me just take a look at it. T -t -t main CPP line 7. Is this a semicolon? Yeah, uh, it certainly looks like it. Yep. STDC. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. I'm seeing the operator here. Okay, there we go. So it says enter int and enter enter in ten. I don't know. Let's say that it's ten. And now we have some random number that we need to enter. And this is exactly what I was talking about. It says here, uh, enter, you see, it says enter and then number. Have I initialized number to anything? No, I have not. And yet there is this strange value here. So it's just a random thing from memory, no big deal. Instead, we shall change this in order to make it a little bit different. We don't need to initialize the number here because the number will be initialized here once the user makes an input, but we can tell the user which number in line do we want him to enter. So enter uh, 
first, second. Uh, I can't actually. It would it would be it would vary from. I want I wanted to write like first or second, third, fourth, but no. I'm just gonna place a dot there and die. And now we're gonna have we're gonna take a look at this. So enter n, then enter first number. Okay, so that makes sense, right? It says here enter first number. Let the first number be one. We can also enter same numbers, uh, two, one, <laughs> four, five, uh, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, and 13, I don't know. Let's add it. So the sum of 10 entered numbers is 60. There we go, the program ends. Let's see if it's indeed 60. 1, 2, 4, 5, 9, 14, 24, uh, 35, uh, 47, 50, 60. Yep, there we go. So it is indeed 60. If you, if you don't believe me, you can just uh, go ahead and calculate it yourself or use a calculator or whatever in order to figure it out. So... Uh, let's go ahead and do a bit of a recap. What this, uh, there are some things that I do need to explain. Uh, for example, the this one, this part here, actually, let's just use some pseudocode here. For, I just want to make sure that you understand this for loop as it is very important. You have the initializer. Oops. And then you have the separator here, and then the condition, and then the increment. Down below, you of course have the body. That is, the body is basically the code that's going to get repeated, that will get repeated. So the initializer, this is our initializer here. The condition, this is the condition here. And you have the increment, and our increment is here. Let me just go ahead and talk a little bit about the increment. I've already explained that the whether the loop will continue or not depends on the condition in the center. And that condition will eventually change from false to true because the initializer initializer is changing, which is the integral part of the condition. The condition is dependent on i actually being less or equal to n. And since the value of i is continuously increasing, it is safe to assume that at a certain point in time, i will become greater than n, and this condition will evaluate to false. Anyway, increment, this last part, it controls the loop steps. That is, in each iteration, the variable i is incremented. Now, in this particular case, it is incremented by 1, and we could have written this in various formats. We could have written i equals i plus one. This was also this was also one of the possibilities. I mean, we wouldn't actually change anything, and we could have also written this one. So you would usually use this format if you wanted to add a number that is greater than one. But if you just want to add one, you can use i plus plus or plus plus i. They were all pretty much the same. However, if the loop, if the loop variable is being incremented by one, uh, this is this is a prefer this is a preferent this is a preferable thing. Let's put it like that. Keep in mind that i plus plus and plus plus i is not the same in expression, but inside the for loop it is. So if you use this in expression like plus plus i and i++, plus plus, these would be two different things. However, if you use it in a loop, in a for loop here, it is a, comp bah, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it is, it is pretty much the same. Furthermore, uh, we can also use the control variable i inside the loop body, as I stated in the very beginning. In our example, we ask the user, for example, to enter the first and then the second and then the third and then the fourth. This is very useful because this is incrementing anyway, uh, right here, and we can tell the user actually which number to enter. So I bid you all farewell, and I ran out of time, and I hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial.